Hi, Katie. Hey, Dr. Rolina. I want to talk about boobs. Okay, that's an interesting subject. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I recently had an experience, and I so I can use that to ask this question. Um, I went for my annual gynecological visit, during which time the doctor does a breast, a manual breast exam, um, and she found she found a lump. Of course, this is you know, it could be terrifying or it could be nothing, you know, you don't know. And so I went for my first ever mammogram. Wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and also a breast ultrasound in the same day was ordered. And what they found was what they're calling a benign calcification. So they said, maybe it was a cyst that like ruptured and calcified or whatever, but they were not worried at all. And my gynecologist said, you know, this could just be about where you are in your period. These like what I'm feeling here could be because of where your cycle is. And I don't know what she meant by that. So can you speak to what kind of like tissue changes would be expected during a period, if any at all? Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, Ideally, not at all, but they, <laughs> but they do, but they do happen. Of course. So let's, let's go after the mammogram first. We use mammogram as a first detection, not prevention, detection. So by the time okay. that we detect, the cancer is already there. So the idea is to prevent um, any kind of cancerous changes. So how can a woman determine that? Because remember that ionizing radiation does contribute, is one of the contributing factors to increasing risk for breast cancer. So while we're using a diagnostic technique as an early detection, it can also help promote certain changes within the breast that can lead to increased risk of breast cancer, right? Um, I'm, I'm not very fond of mammograms. I do prefer breast thermograms because they don't involve radiation. And the ultimate gold standard would be an MRI of the breast because it gives a lot more detailed information about the tissue. But when it comes to insurance coverage is, of course, a maze that most uh, providers, medical providers have to navigate. Um, the gold standard is still considered the mammogram. Only when there is a suspicion noted on the mammogram, it is followed by an ultrasound or an ABIS that it associates um, the ultrasound findings with the findings of the mammogram. And then if further definition of that tissue or suspicion is needed, then the insurance will cover and approve an MRI. But a breast thermogram will find early any kind of changes that could be amenable to some workup. What's the workup? A woman can have an associated Dutch study, for example, to evaluate the metabolism of those hormones. Remember, estrogen promotes growth. It stimulates growth, but we need to give it instructions to how much growth, when and how it should do. And while as women, we benefit from the levels of estrogen, we also need to make sure that we're properly detoxifying that. And serum tests do not offer that information. They give you a combined level of both free and metabolized level of estrogen, but it doesn't tell you what percentage and what kind of metabolite it's going to. So a Dutch study, a Dutch urine study is more amenable to giving you that extra information. Of course, you need to participate with a physician that actually um, has received the training and is specialized in interpreting those kind of tests. So correlating those findings and helping modulate the effects of those estrogen metabolites um, cumulative with the findings on the thermo- the breast thermogram would help a woman minimize her risks for breast development. Okay, so not really fond of those mammograms. Two, how should the breasts feel? They should feel kind of lumpy bumpy. That's a normal kind of feel. It is a mixture of fat tissue, uh, milk ducts, um, uh, lymph, nerves, veins, and things like that. Estrogen, as I was talking about, promotes growth. So promotes that 
uh, breast tissue and cellular growth. So if it's mm -hmm. not well balanced with progesterone, we're going to notice a more um, a, a tenderness, a heavier feel to the breast, more lumpy bumpy than you would normally feel. Now, the way to make that difference is to do breast self-exam during the first three days of the cycle. So what's day one? Day one is the very first day that you get a uterine bleeding, vaginal bleeding. That's your day one of your cycle, okay? And you will have that period, that vaginal bleeding, anywhere between five or three to seven days. During that time, your hormones are low across the board. So there should be no associated breast changes. So when you do that breast self-exam, you use that as a standard to compare with hmm. as you progress in your cycle with your follicular and luteal phase. That's great to know. So you use one cycle as detective work, so to speak. You're kind of getting familiar with how your breasts feel during your um, uh, period in the follicular phase and also in the second phase, the uh, luteal phase. Now, if you're on birth control, that is not a baseline because birth mm -hmm. control, they can be two kinds. So it can be the minipil, which will be a progestin only, which is a synthetic, very distant wannabe of progesterone, but mm -hmm. it's not progesterone mm -hmm. and it blocks ovulation. So you will have more breast tenderness because you're, um, you're, prolonged exposure to estrogen that is not opposed by progesterone. So you will feel more breast tenderness if you're taking a progestin only oral contraceptive, but you can okay. also experience the same breast tenderness in a combined um, estrogen with progestin oral birth control. And by the way, I'm not making distinction between Mirena IUD and mini pill. They both contain progestins. So you may experience the same exact uh, breast findings, the more lumpy, bumpy, more breast tenderness throughout the cycle, as opposed to just in a certain phase. Right. So to establish that baseline would require you to not be on any kind of uh, birth control of any kind, oral patch, um, IUD, things like that, mm -hmm. and getting to know what your breasts feel like. Every woman has a different feel. What becomes abnormal is if you feel a lump that well, if it's a macroadnoma, which is a benign type of um, um, lump, don't want to say tumor because I, I, I would mislead, even though mm -hmm. medically it is called a benign tumor. Mm -hmm. um, macroadnoma can change according to the cycle. So if mm -hmm. it's under the effects of estrogen, it's going to tend to grow. If you stabilize it with progesterone, then it will be the same throughout the cycle. But if you notice a lump, a, a structure that feels harder to touch, and it doesn't move, it's not fr freely movable, then when it's a problem. Mm -hmm. I hope that women will be doing monthly breast self-exams for that early detection. Because if you only go to your primary care physician for a physical exam once a year, mm -hmm. you're missing 12 months of figuring out what's going on with your breasts. And mm -hmm. that's a, a long period of time or enough time for any kind of cancerous cells to be allowed to continue to promote. At what age should women add this into their practice? Breast self-exams or? Yeah. Breast self-exams. I would say get used to it maybe as of age of 21, really? 18, something like that. Wow. Why I'm saying that is because when we first get our periods in our teenage years, mm -hmm. not every cycle is ovulatory. Those hormones are going to fluctuate kind of like mimicking perimenopause until eventually the ovaries get the, uh, the idea of how to um, have a, a, a monthly cycle uh, production. But until that happens, there will be a huge hormonal fluctuation. So the breast feel will be completely different. Wow. Okay. So my takeaways are um, the earlier, the better with the earlier, the better self exams. Yeah. Yes. And that the time to do it is the first three days of your period, which I didn't know. Yeah. That, that would be best because that's when your hormones are lowest mm -hmm. and that's how you know what the baseline is. And then if you find something, you can't just call the hospital and ask for a breast ultrasound, right? You have to go to a doctor and have it ordered. You would, you would need an, an order. So 
easiest thing is to reach out to your primary care. You already have an established uh, professional relationship with him or her, so they can do a breast exam and or um, order most likely will be a mammogram. I hope they will start with an ultrasound, but if they have a high suspicion and let's just say it for medical legal reasons, they will probably order a, a mammogram. Okay. Thank you. This is a very helpful one. I hope people um, listen. 2D versus 3D mammograms. 3Ds are going to have a lot more radiation. And oh. women that have more dense breasts, it's going to be um, a, a 2D mammogram is going to be more difficult to help detect any kind of hidden issues. So that's why they're pushed to do the 3D mammogram. Still ultimate gold standard is the MRI. Because if, if the 3D mammogram keeps coming back with very dense breasts, not able to accurately assess, you know, any kind of risk for breast cancer, mm -hmm. you're going to have an associated um, ultrasound with that, and then you're going to go with an MRI. So instead of, or to avoid all of this mess, mm -hmm. ideally would be great to just go directly to um, an MRI. Wow. Awesome. But start with a breast thermogram. I, I I know that it is not gold standard and it is just as best as the skill of the technician and the interpreting radiologist because there's no specific standards like they are with a mammogram and it is gold standard for conventional medicine for early detection, mm -hmm. but it's a place to start and it does not involve radiation. How do you get one of those? Um, they're uh, breast thermogram uh, mobile units that go to certain physician offices, really? so we can check that. Um, I would urge women to seek help through Sparrow Hospital, and they can direct them when and um, how to schedule their breast thermograms. No way. Okay. Well, that's great to know. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. My pleasure. Okay. Talk I soon. hope I was able to answer the question. It's, it's kind of difficult to assess, you know, breast feel yeah. because what I mm -hmm. feel and what you feel, you know, it's a little bit different. And, and I knew that. I, I think it was the question of like, what do you, what does my cycle have to do with finding lumps in my breasts? And it sounds like not really that much. It responds to hormone signals. Estrogen tells it to grow. Progesterone puts a stop sign to the growth. It kind of gives it instructions. Grow only so much and for this long kind okay. of thing. No. But in other words, it is true that you're, where you are in your cycle can impact what's happening with growth. But what's not true is that just because you're on week two, you should disregard any findings in a manual exam. Oh, correct. Never disregard yeah. anything that is new. Anything um, outside of your baseline, I would seek help. It's better to be told, you know, it's nothing. Um, mm -hmm. And this will resolve with your next cycle as opposed to letting it brew there. Uh, I remember when I was working in Ionia, um, there was a lady who came in as a chest pain admission and she had pain over the right you know, chest area, but nobody bothered to actually remove the shirt and actually make an exam because chest pain prompts EKG and, you know, Art. chest x-ray. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, nobody noticed anything on the chest. There was an ulcerating mass. I, I don't even know how that was not shown on the chest x-ray. It was an ulcerating mass present on the right chest of the woman. She had advanced stage four breast cancer and she had a lump because she carried um, a TV set and it was quite heavy. And the way that he was leaning onto her and probably hit her as she was trying to uh, brace herself against the weight of the TV set. And it has taken months for it to grow and get to that ulcerating presentation. But she didn't go anywhere. Wait, so she had an injury and the injury caused the cancer? Correct. What? I don't know if in the background there may have been something genetic predisposition uh, versus inappropriate metabolism of estrogens. Nobody investigated that in a hospital setting. Hospital settings are for acute situations. Let's get you out of what you have right now and into the hands of your primary care in the community that can further look at, if at all, root causes and what has led to this. So she came in as a chest pain rule out. Obviously, she did not have a heart attack. She had an ulcerating mass. 
please don't ignore any kind of changes. Um, do seek help. The worst that can happen, which is great, is to be told you have nothing. <laughs> but right. it is reassuring, right? As opposed to letting it grow for months before we can do anything about it. So early um, uh, prevention as opposed to detection. Thank you. It was a very informative segment. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. See you. Bye.